Hey there, viewers. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. You know, I haven't talked about Jay Ward since my blog of Mr. Peabody and Sherman back in 2014. So, today, I want to talk about the characters who are considered by fans as their most famous, Rocky and Bullwinkle. For those who don't know, this classic cartoon from the 60s centers on the wacky adventures of a flying squirrel and a dim-witted moose who outsmart two Russian spies named Boris and Natasha and their Nazi-like dictator, Fearless Leader. This show was known for its quality writing and weary humor, as well as mixing puns, cultural and topical satire, and self-referential humor. Also to note, it appealed to both adults and children. And I heard it also influence other popular shows like The Simpsons, which I believe should come to an end soon. Also, Rocky and Bullwinkle's art has been said to have, well, a very choppy and unpolished look and the animation was extremely limited, even by television animation standards at the time. Yet, the series has long been held in high esteem by those who have seen it. Some critics even describe the series as a well-written radio program with pictures. When I was a kid, I was first introduced to this classical cartoon show at Bullwinkle's restaurant which got shut down here in California years ago when I was very little. Also, I did see a Rocky and Bullwinkle stage show during my first visit to Universal Studios when I was little and I did manage to see a few episodes on VHS though not as much as when I was young. However, for this episode, I'm going to look back at a movie from 2000 where Rocky and Bullwinkle made their way into the real world. Released on June 30th, 2000, the movie is The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Now, I hope this video will be something you folks will really like. <clears throat> 35 years after their TV show is canceled, Rocky and Bullwinkle are barely getting by and wondering what to do next with their lives due to all the trees and frostbite falls being chopped down. Meanwhile, Fearless Leader, the evil genius of Pozzlevania, transformed himself from a cartoon character into a live-action human being thanks to the assistance from television executive Minnie Mogul. With the help of his henchmen, Boris and Natasha, fearless leader plots to take over the world by using television to zombify people and then persuading the masses to elect him as president. So, the FBI sends a rookie FBI agent to bring Rocky and Bullwinkle into the real world, and together they go on a daring road trip to New York to put a stop to Fearless Leader's evil plan. So, what do I think of the movie? Well, despite a few hiccups and numerous flaws, I want to consider this film a guilty pleasure for me. But, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The film was directed by Des Makinoff, who has been put in charge of several Broadway musical theater productions like Big River, The Who's Tommy, and Jersey Boys. And the film was produced by Universal Studios. But, unfortunately, the movie became a huge box office bomb. Now, I need to make myself perfectly clear. I am aware of this movie's numerous flaws, like how it crams several plot holes, 
And there's also a lot of bad jokes, and there are times where the fourth wall breaks. But, like with Yogi Bear, this movie is trying to stay true to the original source material. And, in my personal opinion, several other jokes and gags give me a few chuckles. Also, I like that this movie uses animation in a few parts. For example, at the beginning of the movie, there's 2D hand-drawn animation in the style of the show, but things get kind of weird when it goes into live action. Sure, the bad guys become real people the same way Fat Albert did after this movie, but when Rocky and Bullwinkle are brought into the real world via Green Lighthouse, they appear in computer animation. But, on the other hand, I think their computer animated designs still make them look like they're hand drawn, but more a little bit 3D ish. Also, I think the rest of the movie is really wacky and fun. And that's basically all I got for Mustang Notes. So, let's move on to the cast. Now let's start with our two main heroes, Rocky J. Squirrel and Bullwinkle J. Moose. Rocky is voiced by the late voice acting queen June Ferre, and Bullwinkle is voiced by Keith Scott, who narrated Disney's George of the Jungle movies, and he also voiced in The Magic Riddle. To me, I think these guys are really zany and classical cartoon characters. However, I felt really bad that Rocky lost his ability to fly throughout most of the movie, and while it is sad that June Ferre is no longer with us anymore, I'm glad this movie brought her back to reprise her role as Rocky again. As for Bullwinkle, well... I think he's pretty much the same dumb moose that he is in the show, but at the same time, I think he has a good heart, and he wants to, well, discuss with the president about restoring the Frostbite Falls trees. Also, I found it pretty funny that Bullwinkle can pick up radio signals with his antlers, and it was interesting that Bullwinkle is immune to mind control due to his low IQ. Next we come to our human protagonist, FBI agent Karen Sympathy, played by Piper Parabo, whom I remember from the Cheaper by the Dozen movies. Karen has been assigned to bring Rocky and Bullwinkle out of reruns in order to stop Fearless Leader from taking over the world. You know, I find Karen to be a very relatable character. While the FBI wants her to be serious and professional, she kind of resembles everybody who grew up watching Rocky and Bullwinkle's show on TV. Plus, I find it kind of cute and funny when we see a little girl in Karen's eyes, which could represent her childhood. The main villain, Fearless Leader, is played by Robert De Niro, who not only serves as the film's producer, but he's also been in other films like The Godfather 2, The Intern, last year's Joker, and DreamWorks Shark Tale. Now, say what you will about the guy, but I thought Robert De Niro does a great performance as Fearless Leader, especially when he does, Are you talking to me? <laughs> anyway, his evil plan is to use his own cable television network named RBTV, 
which is short for Really Bad Television, which airs mind-numbing programming to zombify the public and persuade them to elect him as president. But after his mole at the White House reports that Rocky and Bullwinkle have returned, Fearless Leader sends Boris and Natasha to destroy them using a weapon called the CDI, or Computer Degenerating Imagery, which removes cartoon characters from the real world by sending them to the internet. Fearless Leader's henchmen, Boris and Natasha, are played by Jason Alexander and Rene Rousseau. Now, when I was little, these two kind of gave me the creeps when I saw them on top of the curtain at Bullwinkle's restaurant. Maybe due to their designs. But anyway, in this movie, they're kind of incompetent shenanigans. Kind of like how Jesse, James, and Meowth are in the Pokemon show. Their main role in the movie is to try to stop Rocky and Bullwinkle and Karen from reaching New York by 8 p.m. Not only do they try to use the CDI, but they also use cartoon weaponry like explosives. And they also have Karen arrested for stealing their truck. Finally, we have Lewis and Martin, played by Kenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell. While they don't have a big role, I think they're decent minor supporting characters due to them driving Rocky and Bullwinkle to Wasimata U to receive Bullwinkle's Mooster's degree, which was in reality a trap set up by Boris and Natasha. And after Boris and Natasha are foiled by Rocky's flying, Lewis and Martin lend Rocky and Bullwinkle their car. And now on to my final words. Overall, The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle may be a bad movie to most of you, but it's still very entertaining and funny in my eyes. And I like that it was trying to be like the original cartoon. Plus, the computer animation and voice acting for Rocky and Bullwinkle is pretty good. Karen Sympathy is a decent main human character, but I think the villains are the best parts of the movie. However, the other jokes are pretty bad, and the fourth wall breaks can be a bit repetitive, but... If you can ignore those bits, it can't hurt to give this movie at least one chance. Also, after watching this movie again, I'm hoping to watch the full series after I get it on DVD from Amazon. In a few days, that is. As for my rating, I'll give this movie a 60% out of 100. Yeah, it is pretty bad. But it's not horrible compared to movies like The Last Airbender, the Bayformer movies, or the Chipmunk Quadrilogy. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me next time as we move away from Jay Ward and on to Nickelodeon to look at a movie starring the Thornberry family. Mustang Power.